Hi everyone, this is Callie. Welcome to Lots of Hearts Week for Lawn Fawn 2024. I'm excited to share today's card because it uses some older and newer products. And we're also going to be stenciling, die cutting, as well as Copic coloring for this card. So let's get started here with the newest product. We have the Heart Garden Stencil. And this is very easy to line up if you've never used it before. We have a mound at the bottom, which I am not using because we're going to be covering that up with die cutting anyway. But then we've got some foliage and hearts that go at the top and they line up with some etching on the stencil. I don't know if you were able to see the etching of the stencil against the black cardstock, but it is there and you really essentially just shift that stencil down and the hearts line up with the foliage perfectly. So I ink blended the foliage first with some freshly cut grass ink and now I'm going over the center of each of the stems with noble fur ink and that's going to add shading and intensify the center of the stems. Now I'm going to shift the stencil down and I'm going to make sure that it lines up with the etching of the stems on the stencil and I'll ink blend the hearts with some guava ink. I'm adding the color at the top left hand corner of the flowers and blending lightly towards the bottom so that'll give our hearts some shading as well. I think this heart garden is super cute on its own but I'm using it to create a background today so we're not using the typical clouds or ink blending blue for the sky. Now moving on to the die cuts that's going to add additional interest to this garden I'm going to use the mushroom border die. This die set comes with a grassy hillside die as well as a mushroom hillside die and it's got mushroom tops as well. For that grass die, I'm going to use some spiffier speckles patterned paper here for the grass and I'm using this one here that's green with some green speckles so I don't have to do any splattering of my own which makes it super convenient to use. Then to give it some additional interest, I'm going to ink blend it with that freshly cut grass ink that I also used on the background to make sure that the colors coordinate a little bit better and so we can get that nice gradient from the light to dark going into the stems of the heart garden in the background. Then I'm going to use that mushroom border die and die cut it with vanilla malt cardstock. And this is completely optional and I don't know if it makes a difference in the long run, but I thought I would give my mushroom stems a bit more shading by adding some pizza crust ink on the stems of the mushrooms. It is a little splotchy, but don't worry. We're going to cover up those tops with these mushroom heads that I die cut using red barn ink. And then we're going to cover up the bottom of this mound with the grassy border die that we die cut in the previous step. Once I've pieced all the mushroom heads on top of those mushroom stems, I'm going to go ahead and attach this to the background panel. I'm going to use an acrylic block to hold all those mushroom heads down and make sure that they secure themselves to the background. Then I'll add the final layer for the background, adding some liquid adhesive to that grassy border panel and attaching it over the mushroom panel. Now it's not all straight. I wanted to make sure that everything was covered nicely. So now I'm going to trim off an eighth of an inch off each side of this panel so that we can get a perfect A2 sized rectangle with a small mat on a card base at the end. And this will clean our edges up nicely. So now that our background is complete, I'm going to stamp some little gnomes for our scene. This is from the O Gnome set. So I'm going to stamp a female and male gnome as well as some mushrooms in this little speech bubble. And before I take these stamped images out of my misty, I'm going to go ahead and stamp a little pink heart at the center of that speech bubble as well using that guava ink to coordinate with the heart garden in our background. Now to start coloring, I'm going to use some very traditional reds for the mushrooms. You can make these more colorful. I just really wanted everything to be simple and cohesive with the mushrooms from the mushroom border. For the mushroom stems and hearts, I'm going to use a light brown and just add a bit of color to the tops of the stems where there could be some shadow from the mushroom tops and add a little bit of that brown to the spots. Now for the gnomes, I wanted to give them a little bit of a different color. I'm using some dark teals here to color their outfits and their hats. Since we already have lots of red on our card, I thought using some teal on these gnomes would be a little bit more fun than using the traditional red and blue colors. For the details on the boots, the male gnomes pants and belt, I'm using some browns and grays. Then I'll finish up with their faces and add some pink for her little apron. 
Okay, so when I'm done coloring, I go ahead and die cut all the images off camera, and now I'm gonna attach them to create my scene. I'm gonna add the speech bubble first at the center, and then I'll add my gnomes using some low profile 3D foam squares just over that speech bubble. Then for the three little mushrooms, I'm just going to add them to the sides of the gnomes and tucking them behind to finish them off. I'm pretty much done with my scene here, but I decided to use my Sakura Jelly Roll pen and add some white gel highlights all over the images. I'm adding them to the Copic images as well as the die cut images and the stenciled images. To finish my card, I just need to add a sentiment. So I'm using a two-part sentiment here and breaking them up, adding one segment at the top and one segment at the bottom, just to make it a little bit more balanced on my card since there's some white space at the top and some green space at the bottom. I've centered the sentiments and I'm gonna stamp directly onto the cardstock there with some crisp black ink. And the last thing I need to do is to attach this to a card base. And that completes my card today for Lawn Fawn's Lots of Hearts Week. I hope you enjoyed this Gnome Hearts Garden card. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you're interested in any of the products that I use, be sure to check out the links below, as well as on the coordinating blog post where there will be more details for you. Thanks so much for stopping by and have a wonderful day, everyone. Bye.